Again tonight with a first of its kind bust in New York City targeting prostitution, but not the women themselves. Instead, officers brought us along to show how they're actually trying to rescue them. Josh Einiger in East New York, Brooklyn, with a story you'll only see on Eyewitness News. <laughs> this industrial strip where garbage trucks park should be deserted at night, a no man's land. Except there are plenty of men driving around in circles buying sex from dozens of women walking the street. There's a, a huge misconception around choice, right? Around the idea that these women are just choosing to do this because they woke up one day and decided they wanted to. Melanie Thompson used to be one of them here in what cops call the Penn Track, a loop of streets off Pennsylvania Avenue in East New York. It's one of the nation's most popular prostitution destinations. Cops have tracked as many as 385 pimps who operate here, deploying countless young women to sell their bodies for sex, most of them against their will. This is a rescue operation. Eyewitness News had exclusive access as, for the first time, the NYPD partnered with advocates for women, turning the page on generations of prostitution enforcement. Cops now view the women as the victims of sex traffickers, caught in the switches between abusive pimps and their quotas, and so-called sex buyers. It's honestly sad that you see these young girls out here and, you know, I guess it's hard to detach from you know, their pimp or, you know. But some of them look like they're 15. Yeah, they are so like They're playing dress up, they're wearing like yep. whatever. And it, it, it just it breaks my heart to see, to see this. But police went into the pen track with a plan. First, clear out the pimps, like these two men, both known sex traffickers, police arrested for drinking in public. Phase one of this whole operation is to clear the neighborhood of the people police believe to be pimps. That way, they have better access to the women involved so they could try to talk to them and get them the help they need. Later, they found an alleged pimp in a car with an exploited woman and an eight ball of coke. They arrested him and impounded the car. As for the woman, well, she says she's in Maine. Right. Um, she's crying. She wants to know what's going on. The advocates approached, now out of sight of her pimp, with information on how to get help. For law enforcement, law enforcement to partner with us and to say, we agree, we're standing in solidarity. We want to convey this message that we recognize that the primary prevention here is to go after the demand. The men who are fueling the sex trade is so inspiring. Cops say this is a simple supply and demand problem that fuels violent crime. And in the course of their work, they recovered three illegal handguns, including a ghost gun tucked in the waistband of a 13-year-old boy. In fact, police say nearly half of all shootings in this neighborhood are related to the sex trade. The perception when you look at this particular activity is, is that there's no violence attributed with it. And unfortunately, that's just not the case. <laughs> Later, police arrested 10 sex buyers, so-called Johns, who tried to solicit an undercover cop. The pen track has been a hot spot for this type of activity for as long as anyone can remember. But cops vow they're here to stay. We're going to do everything in the means of the law to stop this. We'll be out here every other night if we have to. With a new strategy to fight the world's oldest profession.